I'm sure a lot of you have probably thought about this before. How often do you get bot-filled games? I know I have. Which is why I put myself through hell to find the answer. I played every single map in casual. Twice. And in some cases, three or four times. And I did it all to answer that question. My results will statistically determine how likely you are to get an unplayable bot-filled game in any casual mode, as well as which maps and modes are the most and least infested. I also did this to find out how likely you are to be put on a bad or losing team, because personally, that infuriates me, because it happens so damn often. I hate when Valve throws you into a game seconds before your team loses. Joining several games back to back where my team is constantly being spawn camped isn't my definition of fun. So I'm including bad teams in my statistics to find out which maps and modes are the most balanced. But before I can get into the results, I have to explain how I classified bad teams. A bad team can be classified by the following factors. How many rounds have they won against the other team? How many points have they captured? How far have they or the enemy team pushed the cart? What are their average or median scores compared to the other team? These are the four main factors that I used to determine if a team was good or not. However, I would only consider a team to be bad if we lost the game. Because if our team won, then the game was balanced, which makes the game good. And that's what these statistics are all about, getting the best TF2 games statistically possible. If I considered the teams to be balanced based on those factors I mentioned previously, then the team was considered good, regardless of whether we won or lost, because the game was balanced and fun. For bot games, I didn't count every instance where bots were in the game. I only counted games that had enough bots for the game to be effective, such as both teams being full of bots, a full team of bots kicking real players, or real players refusing to kick bots in order to win a game. I also limited my party size to a maximum of three people. Keep in mind, these results aren't definitive and may be drastically different from the results you might get if you were to try this yourself. So take my results with a grain of salt. Playing every map up to four times makes for a relatively small sample size. I also want to encourage you to try this yourself if you don't believe my results to be accurate. I'm in the West Coast, so I mostly got LA and Washington servers, with some Virginia servers popping up. If you're in other parts of the US or aren't in the US at all, your results may be very different from mine, and I implore you to repeat this experiment to find results for your particular region. Now before we get into the results of my research, here's a word from TF2 Chill Zone. <laughs> Alright, now for the results. We'll start from the top of the casual queue and work our way down. I'll be providing a percentage for each mode that can be used to approximate the chances of getting a good game, bad game, or a bot-filled game. I'll also be revealing which maps had the most good or balanced games for each mode, so you can be sure to add them to your queue next time you play casual. First up is Attack Defense. There are 9 Attack Defense maps, and I played 21 games. 14 of them were bad teams, 4 were good teams, and 3 games were infested with bots. This works out to a 66% or 2 thirds chance of getting a bad team, a 19% chance of a good team, and a 14.28% chance of getting a bot infested game. Approximately. Remember, these are the results for my region gathered from a small sample size. This is for reference, so don't take it as gospel. The best maps to play on were Steel, Egypt, and Junction, as each map had at least one good game, and Steel was only good games. Next up is CTF, everyone's favorite, I'm just here for fun game mode. This is one of the game modes where I feel these statistics don't really do the game mode justice. People don't come to CTF to win, and I'm in the same boat. CTF isn't about capping real fast, it's about getting some kills and having fun. It's not a serious mode. Except for Turbine. Turbine's in the Valve competitive queue, so it must be serious! So while I did judge the teams for these maps, it doesn't really carry the weight that the other, more serious game modes would. No one cares if their CTF team is bad, but they care when their payload team is bad. However, having a bad CTF team is still infuriating, because when your CTF team is bad, you get spawn camped. Constant. There are 6 CTF maps, and I played 20 CTF games. Yes, 2 Fort has 7 entries. There's a good reason for it. Nine games had bad teams, four had good teams, and seven were infested with bots. That comes out to a 45% chance of a bad game, a 20% chance of a good team, and a 35% chance of a bot-infested game. This brings me to why 2 Fort has seven entries. Oh, uh, they have a team full of bots. I see like three entire bots. Dude, look at this. Holy shit, there's seven! I queued for five 2-4 games in a row, just for fun, with a couple of buddies. 
and we got bot infested games three times in a row. Yeah, no, that's not going undocumented. I added it to the statistics immediately. Two Fort and Landfall are the worst ones to join if you don't want a ton of bots in your TF2 soup. The best maps overall were Well, Turbine, and Double Cross, with little to no bots and decent teams. But I still play 2 Fort more than any of these maps, and I still have fun on 2 Fort. So don't let these CTF results ruin your day. Control Points. This was by far the biggest sample size of any mode. There are 17 control point maps, and I played 44 games. Yeah, I had to play a lot of these maps three or four times over to get the most accurate results. 19 games had bad teams, 19 had good teams, and 6 were infested with bots. Which comes out to a 43.18% chance of a good team, a 43.18% chance of a bad team, and a 13.63% chance of a bot infested game. That's right, control points came out equal. The mode is balanced! I got an equal amount of good and bad teams, and that makes me happy. The best maps were Foundry, Five Gorge, Fastlane, Process, Metalworks, and Sunshine, all of which were mostly or entirely good games with good teams. There's also Standing, which I just like. I haven't really played it until I started working on this video, and I really like that map now. I highly recommend you all check it out. If you want a balanced game with the best chance of getting a good team, play Control Points. King of the Hill. There are 11 King of the Hill maps in Casual, and I played 30 games. 13 of them were bad, 11 were good, and 5 were bot infested. This comes out to a 43.33% chance of a bad game, a 36.66% chance of a good one, and a 16.66% chance that it'll be infested with bots. This mode is also pretty balanced, even though my results point to more bad games, I'm sure if I or someone else repeated this, the results might favor good games. If you want a good, balanced cough match, Q for Nucleus, Lakeside, Lazarus, and Swegen. Overall, another balanced mode with relatively few bots. Payload. I did include Peer in my statistics. I added it the day that Peer was made permanent. There are now 12 payload maps, and I played 29 games. 13 of them were good, 15 were bad, and one was full of bots. This makes a 44.83% chance of a good game, a 51.72% chance of a bad one, and a 3.45% chance of a bot-infested game. Damn, another very balanced game mode. This mode has the lowest chance of bots, by the way. For the highest chance of a balanced game, Q for Borneo, Upward, Swiftwater, Hoodoo, and Snowy Coast. Hoodoo is another map that I never really played before this, and ended up loving. So if you haven't played it either, go play it. Payload Race. There are four Payload Race maps, and I played 11 games. Six of them were bot infested, three games had good teams, and two had bad teams. That comes out to a 54.54% chance of a bot filled game, a 27.27 chance of a good team, and an 18.18% chance of a bad team. This was kind of weird, because Hightower specifically is a super laid back map, capping is hearsay. So in the case of Hightower, keep playing it. I know that if you're playing Hightower, you don't care about whether both teams are balanced or not. But Hightower had the most good teams of any map. So if you're itching to play Payload Race, go play Hightower or Banana Bay. Who the fuck plays Banana Bay? Even though Banana Bay was bot filled, if you find a game without bots, Banana Bay is great. Miscellaneous. You know, the one with the group keep and that's it. There are seven miscellaneous maps, and I played 20 games. 11 of them were good, 6 were bad, and 3 were bot infested. You've got a 55% chance of a good game, a 30% chance of a bad one, and a 15% chance of a bot filled game. The MISC maps largely go unknown and underappreciated, which is a shame, because I really liked some of the MISC maps. If you're up for it, check out Snowplow, Two Fort Invasion, Probed, Watergate, and Hydro. Yeah, I said it. I like Hydro. Go play it, it's really fun. Manpower. The only game mode Valve ever loved. Manpower got two dedicated updates from Valve. Recently! So it must be good, right? There are four Manpower maps, and I played 11 games. Six games were bad, four were good, and one was infested with bots. Manpower is largely free from bots, no idea why. But even if bots do join Manpower, their inability to use the grappling hook makes it pretty hard for them to ruin other people's fun. I actually enjoyed Manpower a little bit, although some of the power-ups are still overpowered as hell, the power-ups take years to spawn naturally, the grappling hooks get spammed a lot, and the nerfs when you're dominating the game last way too long. Seriously, 
I once got nerfed for dominating the game, and I died 11 times before the game decided to remove the effects. Anyway, the best manpower maps were Gorge and Thunder Mountain, so if you're looking to play a good manpower game, queue for those. Pastime. The final mode. There are three pastime maps, and I played nine games. Five games had bad teams, three had good teams, and one was infested with bots. This comes out to a 55.55% chance of a bad team, a 33.33% chance of a good team, and an 11.11% .11 chance of a bot filled game. Yeah, I don't like this mode. It's not horrible, but the reason why most of the games I joined were bad is because the other team would be full of seasoned pastime veterans. Most of the people I played against were practically gods of pastime, the kind of people that only play pastime. But it is what it is. The best map was District. Don't play on any other maps if you want a fighting chance. Just play District. Now for the overall results. In total, I played 199 games. I got 92 bad teams, 74 good teams, and 32 bot-infested games. So the final percentages for TF2's entire casual queue are a 46.23% chance of a bad team, a 37.18% chance of a good team, and a 16.08% chance of an unplayable bot-filled clusterfuck. They may not be completely accurate, but I didn't strive for complete accuracy. Take these numbers as reference next time you queue for a casual game. Or, do your own research and see what your results turn out to be. If you do that, please leave a link in the comments so I can see what you end up with. And that's it! Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my look into the statistics of TF2's casual queue. If you did, leave a like and consider subscribing. Let me know what you thought down in the comments, and be sure to let me know if you decide to play a ton of casual games to form your own results. I want to see it when it happens. Until then, I'll see you all next time.